So this is our, our September wedding market update. And I hope everyone's had an incredibly busy summer. And of course, we're all noticing the weather's changed a lot. And this is where starting going into winter now, or autumn, which is sad to feel, we'll start seeing Christmas adverts pretty soon. Um, but this is this, this change of moment where people start getting back into planning mode. And you'll also have this wave of engagements that have happened over the summer holidays. So you have this sort of final spike after summer, all those engagements start doing their final planning or of finding their venue and things like that, those, those final pieces, um, before we have that quiet time into Christmas and then the sort of explosion of engagement season. The reason you wanna make the most of this time is those couples who got, over, got engaged over the summer most likely want to get married next summer or next year. So you'll be able to fill in gaps you have. And this is the moment, sort of until engagement season, to fill in any gaps you have in your calendar for next year. Most of the couples who get engaged in engagement season, so from Christmas Day to Valentine's Day, get engaged over Christmas, but either then you finding and planning uh, over from Christmas Day to Valentine's Day, uh, will be looking to get married in 2026, the year after. So that's where filling up your calendar now is a really important time. So today we are talking about the wedding vendor selection process. And this is talking about how couples make their purchase decisions. And we, we now have about 10,000 couples a week uh, planning their wedding on Bridebook. Um, so, so we have a huge number of couples going through. We've got wonderful data. And actually pulling all that information together is helping us show you the data to help you learn this, this journey that they're all on. Um, and that's where we're going to dive into each step and then have our usual shout outs in the industry. I'll talk about the each steps in a moment. They come from an amazing person who has a wonderful moustache as well, John, John Dewey, um, which is the five-stage decision process of how we think. This is over 100 years old, um, but is the foundations of consumer behavior, really thinking, how do you decide about buying stuff? Uh, how do you make that decision that then makes you a commitment? And, uh, and we're going to look at the first four steps of it, which we're going to work through now, and really apply them uh, to couples finding their venue and their suppliers. And we might talk about venues a little bit more when we go into some of the detail, but all of this applies across uh, suppliers as well. It also applies across all your media. So when we're talking about Bridebird, so I've got a bit of a cold, here's winter. Um, but uh, um, when we're talking about Bridebird, also think, how can you apply this everywhere else in your business, whether that's on your website, even on your physical brochure or your handouts, even in conversations, uh, how can this all be applied? So the four steps of making a purchase decision starts with the user, the consumer, recognizing the need, then saying, oh, actually, now, now's the time for me to go and find my venue or florist or photographer or, or deciding, right, I've got a need. Then they do information search. They're starting to try and inform themselves what's what's out there what are the options uh how do i not get overwhelmed and, and how do i start to narrow it down then when they start to narrow stuff down then they're going to be uh uh evaluating this so this is where they're saying right i like the look of this but i want to go and do my safety checks around it so is there something is there something i'm missing is there something i'm going to be caught out on before i before i make this leap and then that purchase decision saying no, I feel very comfortable. I'm ready. I'm ready to buy. So you can imagine even going through uh, an Amazon purchase. If we made it really simple, you start off saying, oh, you know, I need to buy this product. Go on Amazon. You see 100. Let's say you're buying a, a, a dustpan and brush. You see thousands of options. You're trying to work out right what's relevant to you. Then you come down to those two you're looking at. Then you're then you're going and evaluating which is the right one. And then you're saying, go for it. So Sort of simple process, but think of those four steps that consumers apply to any buying decision. We're obviously talking about weddings. Um, and that's where with each of the activity, you want to think about what the consumer is going to be doing, but also the pain points they're going to be facing as they go through. So let's just go back to our dustpan and brush. They go onto Amazon. They're, they're, the activity they're doing is searching. The pain point they're going to feel is overwhelm. 10,000 options or something like that and trying to be aware of these and help them through that journey help to stand out um is what's so important and uh and and we're going to work through each of these stages 
So when we start off, the first step is recognizing the need. So this is where most couples realize quite quickly, once they've got engaged, all their friends are saying, have you set the date? Have you set the date? They're feeling lots of social pressure of, of friends chasing them. And that's where they realize to set the date, the first thing they, they need to do is book a venue. And even some couples will be going off, you know, talking to photographers and suppliers and they'll say, well, you need to put your venue first. So, so then you have your date. So they'll set off on the venue finding journey first. And that's where the number one thing that they're trying to learn as soon as possible is pricing norms. They've never planned a wedding before. And if they have planned a wedding before, this one's going to be very different. They're not just going to copy paste what they did before. They're trying to work out, right, what are the pricings? How, how is pricing done? Trying to educate themselves as quickly as possible. And that's where well, you've seen this before. Couples will go through this long research journey. They'll generally look at 14 venues digitally. Then they'll read 33 reviews. Then they'll contact seven, visit three, and book one. So this is the journey they're going through. And this is where they're trying to understand those pricing norms and trying to understand, uh, trying to get themselves grounded so they can start moving to that next decision where they're saying, right, this, this feels about my right price bracket. This feels within within range of, of where I want to sit on the curve of price. I don't want something crazy expensive. I don't want something you know ridiculously cheap. Uh, I'm aiming for this sort of world. Um, and then trying to trying to orientate themselves. Um, and we see that in all the data. So the biggest challenge when researching venues and supply comes into price matching. They're trying to understand what's value for money, trying to find out what matches their budget trying to get price transparency, trying to, you know, a lot of, lot of businesses uh, is quite uh, opaque or hard to understand or not even shared at all. And then also knowing, you know, how much to spend, what, what, how should they break their budget down? If they have 20,000 pounds to spend, how much are they supposed to allocate for each item? And we try and help as much as we possibly can on Bridebook. We have our budget tool, which thousands and thousands of couples use to try and educate them on this journey. All our, all our different tools to help them uh, you know, get up to speed, but also incredibly important for your side, once we've educated them, for them to actually get the right pricing from you. And as we've said lots of times, uh, suppliers with pricing get at least four times the number of inquiries as those that don't, okay? So whilst you might think, oh, I'll get more inquiries because they have to reach out to get price, as you've spoken in other updates, you know, the Gen Z couple of today or millennial will find that quite nerve wracking. And if there are venues there with pricing and you're one that doesn't have pricing, they're going to naturally go towards that one, have more confidence, and they can be sending a more qualified inquiry because they're within your budget range where, you know, you've already shown some of their pricing. What you want to do is make that as informative and valuable as possible so they can make an informed decision. So where it's pricing from £10 to £100,000, you're not really helping anyone there, and especially if it's just from ten pounds, and that's to come for a cup of tea. Um, trying to give them like an educated journey will help the couple have confidence to inquire, but also help your team not have a lot of ghosting where you're replying and saying, "Well, here's our actual price," and they're like, "Oh, what a waste of time," and not even reply. Or your team have a lot of you know uh, time uh, swallowed up, find a lot of inquiries that actually weren't and weren't ever going to go anywhere because you've done such a such a broad pricing. Um, so they start off really hunting for pricing, and then it's going into information search. They've worked out roughly how much they can spend on, let's say, their venue, but this could be on photography, on floristry, any other category. And that's where they then want to go and find their matches. So they'll be on Bridebook, they'll be on Google, on socials, trying to find where's the best place um, to find what I'm looking for. I've now figured out I've got about seven thousand pounds just to spend on a on my dry hire venue. Let's exclude catering, and a third of their budget. And I've got seven thousand uh, pounds. That's where um, they're when they're off looking for these matches. These are the five key criteria for all suppliers um, that we see couples are looking for. So location, they want if it's their venue, especially, but even for all suppliers, they want someone fairly close to them, so they're able to go and interact with them they feel some confidence they feel you might have worked there before the style and that can be not only um uh just the the physical style but also that sort of 
uh, whether it's style of photography or even your style, that sort of vibe check we talk, where it's um, they want someone uh, tall and trendy or something much more classic, them even getting that sort of uh, um, uh, impression from, from the business. On price, we've already covered. On features, they will have certain requirements. Maybe they have someone who needs, who has limited, um, uh, well, need a venue with disabled access or have limited mobility, someone older or something like that, saying, right, well, that's really important. This might fix our budget. This might be low, close to us, might fit our style. Now we're going to our features, what's really important. And then looking at availability. And of course, you're a venue. That's where often you can more determine uh, the couple's date because they will hopefully fall in love with you and then move to your availability. Once they've set a date, obviously for suppliers, you need to be matching to their date and be available on an exact date for them. Um, and that's where we see couples bouncing around a lot, going and looking for this information. We've built Brybook to try and solve this problem enormously. Proud to say we see 73% of couples saying we're the most valuable resource for venue discovery. Um, and that's where if you were looking up a, a flight today, you had to go through Google and all the different websites of the airlines, it'd be extremely stressful and time consuming. If you could actually go to one place like Skyscanner and say, right, I want to be comparing. I want to work out what's the rough price of a flight I'm looking for. Oh, actually, if I move to the day before, it's a bit cheaper or things like that. If I take the early flight, um, that's where they want to get nice and organized in one place start to make a really considered decision. And that's what we see on, on Brightbook um, doing extremely well. And that's what we're always working on. When we hear the feedback in this, what we're always chasing down, so we said, you know, trying to get all the information in one place so they can make a very considered decision in one place, rather than having to jump around and trying to learn each website as they go there to try and find, I, I got it, you know, I'll explore here and try and find pricing now on the next site, it'll be somewhere else. That's where we see couples really enjoying that. But again, we enormously need your help because um, we have a huge number of filters. We have over 60 filters on Brightbook. And this is where you putting in the information allows couples to find you rather than um, them you know, uh, wafting around, hoping to find the information. We really focus on our depth of the information. And if you happen to have a wedding license and you haven't added it and the couple filters for that, you're not going to show up, which is just... Sad for you, it's sad for us as well, because we'd love to show you to them. So make sure you've got all your categories filled in and I'll show you then that's across all, all, uh, all uh, types of supplier as well. Um, and that's when, once they've done those five matches, as we just said, um, they're saying, right, this is looking really good for us. You know, we really like the look of this one. This is when they're going off to do the sort of deeper evaluation and for weddings, this really comes down to social proof. So we're saying, right, you know, this is a once in a lifetime major decision that's extremely expensive. The big stress of weddings is couples are chasing perfection and therefore every single decision is very daunting. And that's where stress comes from. You don't want one thing to go wrong. It all needs to go right. That's why couples find it stressful. Um, being able to help them by showing reviews, as we always say, and and wedding specific reviews, content showing couples that have had a wonderful time, uploading real weddings so couples can be there seeing, you know, really visualizing it. Lots of people in the wedding industry are wonderfully creative. Most people in the wider world are not that creative. And actually showing them here are some real wedding um, case studies is absolutely fantastic. And also they're nervous. You know, the industry sadly still has a has to, has a reputation for overpricing or scams or 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 or, or, or you know being overpromised and underdelivered, and that's where before they're going to make this big commitment, they're going to be doing as much research as they possibly can, um, and that's where we see for venues couples will go and read thirty three reviews for photographers is still thirteen reviews they will do, um, and that's where getting those reviews up and relevant as much as possible and adding real weddings as well, which is really showing a, almost a showcase or a case study of the reality. It might be Sarah and Sam said, said their wedding was wonderful. Here's the review. Actually seeing Sarah and Sam's wonderful wedding, whether that's their amazing floristry or a video of your band performing or, um, or the venue uh, or the whole wedding, 
um, showing that puts those two together and gives them this huge confidence. And when they see that multiple times, you start to have a lot of confidence. Um, there's something, again, unique on Bridebit that we've built. Really show off your real weddings. It makes an enormous difference. Couples love it. This was a quote from last year. Um, and that's where as much as possible through Bridebit, we're doing as many places as possible for you show off this social proof. So when they get down to this really important evaluation stage, you know, upload your testimonials. I'm sure you get lovely thank you emails. Chase all your couples from the summer. Ask them to give you reviews or you can upload reviews you've received, even if it's a thank you card and things like that. You can add a photo so we have a much deeper um, reviews so you can show some actual content with it. Upload your real wedding, show off your awards, and also make it really wedding specific. Google reviews can be fantastic, but if you're not solely hosting weddings, that's where Google reviews can seem uh, quite mixed. It might be someone who's come for your restaurant or someone who's come for your spa, actually someone reading through those saying, oh, I had a wonderful massage, that suddenly goes, well, you know, I'm in the wrong place for review reviews. That's where um, on Bribe it, we want to be like hyper wedding specific, get all your couple, get all your content there so you can really show off to them. And all of this, as I'm saying, you should be applying to all your, all your media. So again, I think on our next slide, I might show you very quickly, but this, you know, couples telling us they're going to read the whole page of Bride Book. Um, uh, and before they even request a brochure, they're going to absolutely study it. And that's where, when they're looking at this research and this evaluation page, you know, they might start on Bride Book and hopefully, and we see most do, um, but they will still be going and doing evaluation elsewhere. They'll be coming and looking at your own website. 45% will be doing that. 51% will be coming looking at your Instagram. 42% uh, will be coming to your Facebook. And this, as you'll see, all these blue numbers are bigger than pink. This is Gen Z versus Gen X. This is the way the world's moving. They're used to a sort of review-based world, whether that's Just Eat or, or um, Amazon or whatever. They're used to reviews. They're used to Trustpilot. Um, they're going to go and verify and they're going to do a very online experience before they take the step to go offline. Um, here again, they're going to be doing a huge amount of research on your pricing, huge amount of research on, on real photos, trying to get this information to evaluate you before they're even contacting you, before they're booking you. Um, and that's where it then comes down to that purchase decision. So they say, right, I'm really excited about this narrow selection. I think we're doing on time. Uh, we're now really excited about this narrow selection. Um, it's it's time to go and visit. It's time to get in direct communication. You might already have been in some communication. If you know they might have been asking for your pricing, if you haven't showed it yet, but this is the moment where they're saying, "Right, we're really trying to find out: Are you the one? Most likely, they'll be coming to visit you if you're a venue, if you're if you're a supplier, trying to meet in person, trying to." They're trying to uh, check sort of the rapport, the vibe, the sort of person you are. So they're going to put a huge amount of trust in you uh, and say, right, you know, we love everything about this. Now we love the team. Actually, I've looked this person in the eyes. I have a lot of trust in them. Right. We're ready to go for it and, and ready to commit. And that's where thinking about those pain points of slow replies or it being really difficult to visit or being ignored at a show round or something just looking, you know, the, the person arriving late to, to have a coffee to talk about photography or something um, really shows up and can undermine all your hard work to date. Um, you know, we've seen this from couples. A venue left us waiting 10 minutes. I'm sure the venue has a very good reason. I'm sure, um, you know, they're extremely busy, but the couple is their special moment. They've got engaged and this tells them a lot about it, says put a dampener on their viewing experience. Um, people getting uh, getting back to them slowly. That's why we're always trying to encourage you quick responses. Uh, that That's what, again, the modern audience is used to. They're used to WhatsApp, not post. They want quick, instant responses, instant gratification. And that shows that sort of builds rapport. And and again, we've, we've done uh, sort of talks on this before. I think it was, if you take uh, Harvard Business School, did a study on millions and millions of leads across all sorts of businesses. If you replied within an hour, 
rather than within 48 hours, you are 60 times more likely to secure the business. One hour is obviously tight, but it's just showing that difference. Someone's excited by you as quickly as you can get back to them. On Rybit, we have auto replies, uh, digital brochures, so instant replies from your brochure, auto chasers, templates, all of that to help you. But use that and use that sort of in your wider business as well. How can you get back to people quickly? Because that's a big sign of confidence to couples. Um, and we're even trialing something at the moment. Reach out to your account manager if you're excited, where they can easily request show rounds and visits uh, to venues on Bridebook. We know couples get, will, will try and do as much as possible online and say, right, we've fallen in love. That's when they can be frustrated where they want to schedule a visit. They sort of fall in love in the moment. And then there's a back and forth. It might be Saturday afternoon when they're doing their wedding planning. Your team's not coming in till Monday. And they, you know, they want to be in planning mode. That's where they can start booking uh, venue visits um, and show rounds. And, and we're trying this at the moment, but hopefully it's a great success and we'll expand it and always looking for feedback. Um, so those are the four key steps. So thinking through, looking at your own business, how to do transparent pricing, how to show them and help them have as much confidence as quickly as possible. Then how to show you're a match. They'll be matching you on price, on your location, on your style, your availability and your features, doing that as quickly as possible. Then looking at how do you reinforce all of that through social proof, making sure your Instagram looking great and up to date, making sure you've got testimonials and reviews and, and everything on Bridebook, making sure your, your um, website is showing a really immersive experience because they are going to visit there to sense check everything and giving that really holistic approach. And you might have a wonderful Brightbook profile and uh, might have a brilliant Instagram profile. But if your website's not mobile optimized, you go, oh, this is tiring to use. It's going to be really difficult. You probably really set yourself back there. And, and on any of those pieces, that, that's, you know, they all rise together. As you said, they'll go on 3.8 pieces of media beyond that. And then getting to that purchase decision or definitely getting them to your venue, getting them to an in-person meeting, um, Make it, you know, make it fun, build rapport, respond quickly, show that sort of vibe, show that personality, make them feel special. It's the most special moment of their lives. They've just got engaged. They're planning the most special event of the most special day of their lives. Live up to that energy, even if you're, you know, it's difficult, but even if you're having, you know, a very busy day or busy in the middle of another wedding, try and always remember each, each person, this is their special moment. Um, even if we're busy handling, you know, lots of weddings over a season. Um, and to help with all of this, I'm very excited to show you, and I hope many of you have used already, the new uh, Brightbook business platform, ta-da! Um, and we have rebuilt the whole platform now um, with all different categories here. I'd encourage you to go into it uh, as soon as possible. I'd say now, if you can. Um, but this is where... We've grouped everything. We've cleaned up uh, different tools, improved tools as well. So you have your dashboard showing you all the key insights of your business. This will show you, uh, you know, key, key statistics of how you're performing and what's going on. When you move on to your couples, this is going to show your inquiries and also all your bookings and also all the recent activity of couples on your Bridebook profile. So you can see where they're going, what they're up to. On performance, this is going to show you how you're doing against competitors, how your ROI with Brybook is going. You can track how your business is performing, are your team responding as quickly as other venues uh, near you, things like that, all to help educate you on the, on the key points we've spoken through. When we're looking at growing your business, this is where you can target couples. You can say, it's really important for me to fill my Thursdays next year, and I want couples with this capacity or this budget or this area. You can reach new categories like I want to reach um, uh, where the venue I started is in Buckinghamshire. We want to reach um, uh, West London or we want to reach Surrey as well. Um, your profile, this is where all the information I was just talking about of, of what features you have. And we're constantly improving this. We have cultural features now. We have all the different um, of 60, as I said, 60 different filters. All of that comes out of this section of the site. This is where you can also be uploading testimonials and reviews and making your profile in that digital shop front, which 73% of couples are going to be starting and looking at. 
making that absolutely shine. We want you to look your very best. Think of putting on your tuxedo or your, your wedding dress, walking down the aisle. We want you to be looking that good. Um, so couples discover you and then they're going to start interacting with you. And that's sort of over to you, but we want to help you as much as possible. And we have our knowledge hub, which has all our recordings like this, and our reports, detailed insights. So if you want to deep dive one of these topics, we obviously be going fast. Um, there'll be a lot more information there. And finally, help and support. We're always here. Email hello at bridebook.com. The team are waiting for you or message your account manager, or you'll have a lot of answers in here as well. So some very quick shout outs to the industry. As always, a huge welcome to 79 new wedding businesses to, the, to our industry, the best industry in the world. Good luck to all of you. It's brilliant to see these businesses joining our industry. We're here to help you as much as possible. For the most reviews, as we said, our winner is Bartle Hall Hotel. Congratulations, you got 19 new reviews in the last 30 days. We've got First Light Photography, so close with 18, and then Spectrum Wedding Photography with 14. Any businesses listening who haven't emailed all their couples of this summer asking for reviews or asking their testimonials or uploading your testimonials, all that hard work you did, the best thing you can possibly get from it today is reviews and testimonials. So if you have five minutes today, this week, I couldn't think of a better five minutes, honestly, and sending a quick email to all those couples. It can even be a BCC. Ideally, just send it individually, but send a BCC out to all of them saying, hi, you know, we hope you had the most amazing summer. It was a pleasure hosting you over the summer. Um, you know, we're still recollecting it. Um, if you had a moment, please please uh, uh, pop us a review here. You can find your review link on Brightbook. They can upload photos. They can add more detail. Um, and that's something you can sort of cherish and that will help you thrive ahead. Um, thank you, as always, for our own reviews. We have a big feedback culture at Brightbook. Send us feedback. We're so proud of our Trustpilot. Send us feedback as, as much as you want, whether it's on Trustpilot or in person or, or to your account manager. Um, we want to improve. Give us feedback on, on talks like this. You know, we want to mix stuff up as well. So if there's a talk you'd love us to do or do something in person, do a workshop on something or something more interactive, uh, let us know. We, we are here to help you guys thrive. Um, as I said, there are always our wedding market updates. They're all on Spotify. They're also on YouTube. They're also in the Knowledge Hub in your private profile, as I just showed you, on the business platform. So I think it's 12.30. We've done it. Um, so thank you all for your time. Uh, we, As always, we have a moment for quick fire Q&A, but I know most people have to drop off. Um, but but do put questions into uh, into the channel. And uh, and I'll start trying to reply as quick as I can to um, uh, uh, to as many as possible. But do uh, drop off. You can hear um, my husky voice is getting huskier than normal, so I'll get as fast as I can. Um, so there's one from Crystal, and a lot have come in, so I'll try and take more off. Um, are couples still interested in quality, or is it all down to paying less now? So um, couples are. Um, so couples care enormously about quality and they always care about quality. This is the most special day of their lives, but we're in a price sensitive world. So that's where, you know, the economy is difficult. Weddings are always going to be expensive. You've got a lot of guests, you know, um, they're always relatively one of the most expensive days, if not the most expensive day of your life, hosting a party for many, many other people. Um, but quality is incredibly important. So that's where trying to match the two where, you know, um, trying to show people choice at the venue uh, I started, showing, right, we can cater for all sorts of budgets, but they're going to be different offerings. Everything's going to be high quality, but we'll have some winter offerings that may be a smaller number of people, maybe a, a more limited offering. And then we can have, you know, huge offerings for the middle of summer that will be more expensive, but that helps couples choose their uh, where they want to sit. Another one we always talk about is dynamic pricing. And your Saturdays shouldn't be the same price as your Wednesdays uh, or Tuesdays or Mondays. And, and I think that really applies also to all uh, providers. Um, 
obviously it, 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 it will depend on which which category you're in. But if someone's getting married on a Wednesday, most likely it's due to pud- budget reasons because pretty much everyone would pre- prefer to get married on a weekend, but they'll move to Wednesday because maybe they'll save a lot of money on, on their venue. That shows they're a price sensitive couple. And if your pricing is exactly the same for a, for a Saturday or a Wednesday, you might struggle to, to win that couple, even if they're just looking at, right, we're more price sensitive. How can we find you know, the, the best price for us? So I think showing a lot of choice, showing add-ons, giving stuff away for free is often much better than a discount. So you say, if you, um, if you get married mid- midweek, we'll incru- include our drone photography or something like that just for midweek weddings. That can be something that's highly priced. That's a wonderful add-on for this couple. It's not actually going to cost you that much money unless you're renting the drone. I'm guessing you're owning it. So uh, trying to trying to think about all your pricing. But quality is incredibly important. I, but I would say it's a more competitive industry as couples are, are, are price sensitive. Uh, what are your thoughts? It's a fun one. What are your thoughts on TikTok as a marketing channel? So... So I'm a huge proponent of TikTok. I think it's very challenging um, to uh, to have full confidence in it because of the way algorithm, its algorithm works is it is it goes out to a massive audience, and if you don't catch attention, um, you know, it sort of disappears. So I think the main thing about TikTok uh, that I'd encourage to everyone, and obviously Instagram's copied it with Reels, is Short form video content is incredibly, incredibly relevant to today and to our industry. We're luckily in an industry where we have incredible content produced every weekend and, and we're lucky to be you know, at, in person at all these events. And people are looking on TikTok for beautiful imagery that's emotional, that's you know, got a sense of anticipation and things like that. And that's what our industry is all about. So getting that content out there is a great way, and all of Gen Z are on TikTok, great way for someone, if they came and looked for you on TikTok, to like vibe check you, and it'll show you some of the behind the scenes, to real color um, about your business, much deeper than just a perfect, you know, edited Instagram post, or your beautiful cover photo on a, um, on a, uh, on your website. That's, a bit like real weddings just shows this deeper picture of it's not just one photo, it's content, it's showing different angles, it's it's showing the season, um, uh, it's showing the different seasons. And uh, so I'd be a big proponent of it, but I would not commit huge resource to it. I'd make this as a habit that you're collecting videography as you're going around, posting it and starting to learn. And definitely short form video content is the way the world's going. You can see you know, TikTok went that way, Instagram's followed it. Now YouTube Shorts is taking over YouTube and that's just where couples are, are hunting for this information. Um, Christia Reynolds said, uh, I loved your Instagram and uh, your presence online webinars. Being older, I'm a novice with social media. I wondered if there are any more educational videos or courses that you would recommend. Um, so different thoughts. We've done a few of these talks, go into the Knowledge Hub. And you'll be able to uh, um, uh, you'll be able to um, see what we've done. Uh, other bits I'd highly recommend is being confident to test the whole time. It doesn't take that long to learn it. You just need to be brave. Put a few videos up. If they get zero likes and zero views, it might hurt you for a moment. But just realize no one's even seen them. So so don't worry about it too much. But you'll start seeing what's getting traction, what's what's working chat to you know younger members of your team chat to younger cousins or nieces or nephews or who might be really up to speed with this and could give you a bit of a bit of a demo but just like we all learn social media as it's been invented as it comes i just say interact with this see what you're enjoying if it's making you smile if it's making you watch it uh, if you're saving it just try and take a moment to think oh why did i save that why did i watch that whole video why didn't i just swipe past it and that will teach you a lot very quickly. But I wouldn't instantly know any, any courses straight away, but there'll be huge amounts that you can find online. Um, it's, it's an absolutely booming industry. Um, so uh, 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 Melanie asked, 
I'm on Google and search barn wedding venues UK and bride book is lower down than some others. Is this because we're more focused on hotels and manor houses? This is what I'd say, and it's a fair question, Melanie. Bride book, we are hyper focused on app users. So we are a platform. We're not just a uh, search, logged out search. We're a platform like Instagram where all our couples are logged in. They go through our long onboarding. And we can do a demo of this, or you could sign up if you want to uh, have the experience. It's free, obviously, for couples, where we will guide them through an experience and then help them know, uh, help them educate them on their budget, on their checklist. So we're a logged in tool. So if you go on the App Store, you'll see at the top of the App Store, we've been featured 13 times. We're a, we're a, we're a product rather than maybe some older school, you know, blogs and things like that. Uh, we, you know, we still care about where, where we position on some of that, but we don't care as much as you might imagine. What we want to do is help couples and and 71% of UK couples have the Bright Book app. So we have a huge number. The denominator of that is UK marriages. Um, so, so a vast number. We will guide them through the journey. We want to be a guided experience. So you might imagine like Instagram doesn't come up on Google that much because it's a logged in platform. You can't Google into Instagram. That's how we think of ourselves as we're a, we're a sort of walled garden platform where they come into our ecosystem because they're logged in. We know a lot more about them that allows our algorithms and us to match make them far better than it just being random Google traffic, to be honest. And that's how you'll see most platforms today, the sort of modern era of tech um, will be more that world like a Deliveroo or a, or a TikTok, you're not going to find TikTok much on, on Google. They get you into that platform, then they know far more about you, and then they're able to show you far more relevant content than a logged out um, experience like YouTube. If you're not logged in, it's just a trillion videos, and it's up to you where you start. But TikTok has guided you and say, oh, clearly you like this. We'll show you more of that. Um, so I hope that helps. Um I think we will pause there. I can see my my uh, croaky voice, but do send feedback on what you want us to improve. I can see a couple of things. Someone's saying, can we speed up the loading of the inquiry page that is in our roadmap? I will follow up on that one, uh, but we will, uh, we will work on that. That might be sometimes your browser. Um, so check, you wanna be using like the latest Chrome browser, um, but email your account manager and we can double check on that. Um, and I think that's about it. But thank you all for joining and, uh, and yeah, wishing you huge success on this exciting time of those last of the summer engagements and making the most of, of helping your business. All right. Thanks so much.